Defense Minister Bill Blair confirming to CTV there that the U.S. shared new intelligence with its allies, including Canada, about Russian efforts to deploy a nuclear anti-satellite system in space. The defense minister says, as you heard, the threat to Canadians is not imminent, but that he is concerned. Here's more from the White House. While I am limited by how much I can share about the specific nature of the threat, I can confirm that it is related to an anti-satellite capability that Russia is developing. I want to be clear about a couple of things right off the bat. First, this is not an active capability that's been deployed. And though Russia's pursuit of this particular capability is troubling, there is no immediate threat to anyone's safety. We are not talking about a weapon that can be used to attack human beings or cause physical destruction here on Earth. Joining me now live in studio to talk more about that is the former head of Canada's spy agency, CSIS, Ward Elcock. Hi, Mr. Elcock. Great to have you back in studio. Pleasure. I appreciate you making the time. Uh, a couple of things in the way the White House described this that I'm hoping you can help the rest of us understand. They said that it was, uh, quote unquote, space based and that it violated the 1967 Outer Space Treaty. What do you take from that? Uh, not that, that depends on the details uh, exactly whether what, what the violation would be so hard to hard to speak to that without a little more information on on what they're thinking or what their what their allegations are. Um, they're both the Chinese and the Russians have tested space based weapons in the past. The Chinese in 2007 and the Russians in 2021. So it's not entirely new the idea of a space based weapon. The Americans reacted pretty sharply to both of those those tests in the past, uh, and saw them as at least uh, not in the spirit of the of of the treaty. Um, clearly, from the Russian point of view, having the capacity for a space-based weapon, uh, given all of the things we depend upon that are in space these days, for military command and control, for communications, um, for a whole lot of things, for for. Uh, uh, intelligence gathering, um, uh, overhead uh, imagery, and so on and so forth. All of those things, in some sense, are at risk once you start to have a space-based weapon that can actually disable your, your capabilities. So it would be serious if it, it were to be deployed. Right now, the White House it's, says it's... It's, it's serious if it, if it would be more serious if it were ever used or there were a threat of its being used. The fact that it, is being that it has been deployed is worrying, but I think, as, as people have said, it's not an imminent threat. Uh, I don't think Mr. Putin wants to go to war with anybody right at the moment beyond the war he's already put himself in. Um, so clearly the Russians are... Uh, are trying to be prepared or be ready for whatever they want to do or whatever pressure they may face. But at the end of the day, is this a, is this a threat, an imminent threat? Probably not. How does that determination get made? I mean, you were the head of CSIS, but you were also the deputy minister for uh, defense. How, how does a government like the White House or the Canadian government arrive at a conclusion that the threat is not imminent? <laughs> There's a certain amount of guesswork to that. This is not rocket science. This is, sorry, not, this is not absolute science. Right. You can say it's black or it's white. Uh, so there is an element of judgment in all of these things, which is uh, part of the, it's a risk calculation, if, if you will. Uh, the reality is um, the Russians are, are not our friends. There are, they are, in fact, our enemies. Uh, they clearly, oppose much of what the Western, the West, nor, uh, NATO, the United States, Canada, and other countries uh, believe in. So in a sense, they are always a danger to us. Those who say they're not are, are unwise uh, and frankly creating a dangerous situation if they proceed along those lines. So the Russians are a danger to the extent that they build new weapons and they've built some other new weapons. They've built a new torpedo. They have got a, they've, they've got a new hypersonic rocket and a number of other weapons they've built over the last while that Putin has trumpeted. So clearly they're continuing to try and build their arsenal so that they can either defend themselves from an attack or if they wish, launch an attack on somebody else. The risk calculation is, are they likely to do it? How likely are they to do it? 
Uh, what are the challenges if they do it? Uh, are we ready for them? Do we have do we have a response? Can we make it so costly for them that they never go beyond simple deployment or contemplating deployment? Does it surprise you at all, given what you do know and what you do assess to be the threat already posed by Russia, that they would develop something like this? It's not a surprise that they would develop it. It's not a surprise that they would, uh, as the Americans have suggested, go beyond the, the, the limits of the treaty. The Russians, uh, the Russians are hardly a trustworthy partner of, of, of any sort. Um, uh, Mr. Putin is uh, a dictator of a, a, a proto-fascist regime. Um, it, this is a, it's a dangerous country. Uh, it po poses a danger to the West, poses a danger to us uh, as part of the, of the Western alliance. Uh, so yes, you have to be conscious of what Russia is doing. You have to be aware of all of the things it's putting in place. And I suspect the American intelligence is probably pretty good as to what, what has been deployed and what is there and what the level of threat is. They're not, that is obviously not going to be shared very widely, but uh, I suspect they've got pretty good intelligence. It is interesting the way in which the intelligence ended up being shared insofar as uh, the U.S. decided to share it with its allies, which is, I, I, I'm sure you can tell us, cor regular course. Well, it, 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 but it, it went to Congress, and then yes. Congress started talking about certain par people in Congress started speaking about the fact that it existed quite publicly, which is not a normal uh, occasion. Well, it, it, I think the initial one was, I think, was Mike Turner, Correct, yes. um, who, who was the one who, who made the comment. He didn't actually identify what the issue was, but said that the, mm -hmm. the U.S. government should make public, should make more information public. Um, uh, some of that is probably down to um, uh, the tensions between Democrats and Republicans in, in the U.S. legislature. Um, uh, clearly, the right wing on the on the Republican side is uh, some have concerns uh, about what the Russians are doing. Some don't, but a number of them still do. Uh, and he was anxious to get this out. Whether it's as an imminent threat as, in a sense, his intervention suggested, it doesn't seem that that's the case. But. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's wrong to have more information out there uh, for people to be aware of what the issues are. And would it finally, my, my final question, Mr. Elcock, would it be a, a normal practice for the U.S. to share this with an ally like Canada or the Five Eyes? Is that something that happened frequently under your watch? And this type of intelligence, would that normally be something that is shared? It often would be shared. It depends to some extent on where the intelligence came from how sensitive it is, uh, whether they want to telegraph to the Russians that they actually are aware, or, or they don't want to telegraph to the Russians that they're aware of the Russians having put this in space. Uh, do they want to hold it back for some reason? Uh, but usually these things would at some point be discussed with, between allies. Uh, so at some point we would have seen intelligence on this subject, as we have on others in the past. Okay, I'm going to leave it on that note. Mr. Alcock, thank you very much for your Good analysis pleasure. this evening. I appreciate it. Warren Alcock is the former head of CSIS.